Hey guys, okay, so we have another mukbang. We are going to eat shrimp. I've tried to DM you, I have tried to give you help, I've tried to do that in private, and every time I would try and help, she always wanted to make it a public thing. She always wanted to tell everyone. And then all of a sudden, if you're trying to shift into being like, you know what, screw it, I'm just gonna eat myself to death. I know that sounds dramatic, but that's exactly what's happening. If you're over 500 pounds, that is very, very unhealthy, and you are eating yourself to an early grave. Hey guys, so it is time for another mukbang and we're gonna let's eat together. So I know the video you guys got from me yesterday was a mukbang. Why am I filming a mukbang? Hey guys, so welcome to a mukbang. I figured I would film a mukbang moment. Mukbang. Okay. So I have a mukbang. Shrimpgate was about much more than shrimp. While the marine crustaceans served as the centerpiece to the whole debacle, the rest of YouTube perceived Shrimpgate based on the drama occurring around it. And good lord was their drama. So why are we bringing up Shrimpgate two years after it happened? Well, Shrimpgate is something that everyone within the niche is aware of, so we were a little uncertain about making a video about it. However, this week, one of Amberlyn's paying members asked her, can you explain why you got so much backlash for Shrimpgate? ALR stated it was just for the funnies and essentially said Shrimpgate was all an elaborate joke and prank and a power trip from her viewers. Can you explain why you think you got so much backlash from Shrimpgate? I think a lot of people were angry because during that time I said that I wasn't gonna talk about my weight loss anymore. Um, so a lot of people got really angry about that and I was like smug about it, whatever. I, I do think that is my choice and my opinion and I still stand by that. Um, I think the whole let's unsubscribe to Amber Lynn thing was more so just like, oh, this is just for funnies because I lost over like 10,000 subscribers and I gained them all back like a few weeks later. So it was mainly just like a, I don't know what it was, but people were like upset with me, but I feel like I can't tell anyone when they should or should not be upset, but I mean, if I don't want to talk about something on my channel, I feel like that's okay. I feel like, you know, I should have that option. And we are here to address how wrong that take is. Because it is a hot take, but a very wrong one at that. So before we get into that, we first have to establish why this issue is important in the first place, not just to the Amberlynn Reed community, but to the world. Just to give you a little preview, uh, this issue ties into debates over mukbangs, obesity, health, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, the South Korean government, and of course, YouTube as an entire platform. So besides tying into all of those frivolous topics, this is also going to be a retrospective on the incident just as much as it will be a recounting and a commentary on it. So if you aren't completely informed of the situation, uh, still stick around because we will be going over it and by the end of this video, you will know what the fuck we're talking about. Also, just a brief content warning, as we put up on the screen, we will be getting into some sensitive subjects which are also listed on the screen now. Many of these deal with binge eating disorder and related eating disorders so as an added measure we've put some links and really wonderful resources in the description and in the pinned comment for if you're in need of such free online resources or if you just want to better educate yourself on these issues. We're not affiliated with these organizations in any way but we do support them independently and hope you'll check them out should it be something you're looking for. So to start off we know that not all of our audience is well versed in Amberlynn Reed's long and storied history, completely justified, the Amberverse runs deep. So we've put together a short, highly professional presentation to catch you up to speed on the initial drama, presenting Shrimpgate in five minutes or less. Don't mind us flexing our skills, but graphic design is our passion. So March 20th, 2019. Amberlynn Reed does a sausage mukbang at her current weight of around 600 
LBs, as she would say. She gets DMs from obese to beast among the rest of the backlash that she receives from this initial choice. And among the things said is that mukbangs shouldn't be done by people on a weight loss journey. This is something that Amber seems to inherently disagree with. So on April 3rd, 2019, Amber strikes back. And what is her master plan for getting back at all of the negative backlash she's been getting? Of course, she releases another mukbang, this time with shrimp, so at least she's branching out in her food groups, I guess. So she changes the narrative throughout the course of this mukbang and turns it into obese to be saying obese people shouldn't do mukbangs, which isn't what was initially said to her, but okay, hot take. And she makes a bunch of controversial remarks throughout the mukbang as well, including but not limited to you are not my mom, boss, or doctor, referring to her audience, you know, like a 12 year old. People only supporting us when we're doing what they want us to do. That's just not how life works. You either like us or you don't, or you support us or you don't. No matter what I do, no matter what Chantel does, we're going to get hate for it unless we are doing exactly what you told us to do. But you aren't our moms, you aren't our bosses, you aren't our dads, you aren't our doctors. <laughs> She makes content for her quote-unquote true supporters only, and these people are described as people who will never criticize her, will blindly support her no matter what she does. But there's a lot of people who support me no matter what, and are there for me no matter what, watch me no matter what, and those are the people I keep making videos for. So... <laughs> Hats off to you. <laughs> and that mukbangs aren't unhealthy. She refers to skinny mukbangers as proof of that and says that it's not that hard to lose weight while doing it. There are skinny mukbangers out there. They don't gain they don't gain weight at all. Um, there have been mukbangers out there who have lost weight. It is a thing. It's not something that's crazy. It's easy to gain weight doing it, obviously, but it's also not that hard to lose weight while doing it. She also says that this is a healthy mukbang because it's only 4.5 servings of shrimp and dipping sauce. And there's 4.5 servings in this whole thing. It's not that many calories. And that includes the good old cocktail sauce. And that's even if I finish the whole thing. So, it's like, not that difficult. And finally, she says that her water jug is pretty and spends an awful lot of time on that, which is definitely a choice. Isn't this a cool bottle? This is the um, Kroger brand, I think, yeah. And their plastic looks kind of cool, so. I can't get over this. Even the plastic feels like better. It's so cute. <laughs> The little things in life. So, of course, there was plenty of backlash from that one as well, even more, which is why this is Shrimpgate. So, let's get into some of those comments. Stop comparing yourself to fit mukbangers. They are not 600 pounds. You act like your viewers made this a weight loss channel. You made this a weight loss channel, but kept gaining weight, and now you're mad about it. Take some responsibility. Amberlynn, this is not a weight loss channel. Stop talking about it. Loses 10,000 subs. Weight loss journey begins again. We see right through you and we aren't buying it. So as mentioned, Amber's subscribers dropped heavily. She lost a lot of subs all at once in a mass unsubbing event. Estimates range from usually about 10,000 to about 5,000, like you see here on the graph from Social Blade. This seemed to scare Amber, so she made a bunch of follow-up videos, which were all a hot fucking mess, which we will get to in a minute as well. But with that, that concludes Shrimpgate in five minutes or less. Thank you for attention. Back to your regularly scheduled programming. So there's a lot to comment on here, but one of the most key points I really want to emphasize about this whole situation type deal 
is that Amber actually elucidated for once what she looks for in an audience and what her channel is meant to center in her mind. Though note that this is absolutely nothing set in stone and throughout this video she will flip-flop on this a lot. The way that she talks about her audience seems to be separated into two distinct factions if you will. One is people who disagree with her, not people who hate on her, but the people who just disagree with her or dare to critique her for, you know, contradicting the whole point of her weight loss channel by doing mukbangs constantly. And then the people who support her no matter what. Basically, she's looking for an army of sheeple. That's what it sounds like she's looking for. Because when you're uploading content completely demeaning the entire point of your weight loss journey, then I don't see how you can expect your subscribers to just continue to stand behind you and be like, yes, queen. This really comes across in the rudeness of her tone. When she's talking to the former group of subscribers, she seems to be more like, as we said, you are not my mother, you are not my boss, you are not my doctor. Very confrontational, first of all. And then also she relies on her friend Foodie Beauty, uh, who is another channel who somehow has even more drama than Amber Lynn Reed. Yeah, we're never touching that. She says that her audience, her subscribers, only like both of them when they're doing exactly what they want her to do, which is, you know, post about her weight loss journey and not post things that demean it constantly because it does matter to a lot of people. And so she says that the people who will truly support her will follow her in Foodie Beauty to the ends of the earth and won't mind if they are posting whatever they want instead of what they originally promised and originally set out for. This is also especially ironic to note, um, her whole flippancy on whether or not this is a weight loss channel, because if you look in the description of the shrimp video, she links all of her weight loss social medias. Like most of the social medias she links are weight loss related. She links her weight loss Instagram, her Fitbit app, and her MyFitnessPal account, all in the description without stating anything else. So it's still obviously a very big part of her brand at the very least, if not her channel, if not her life. And so for her to say that everyone is just magnifying it for themselves is absolutely ridiculous. The other key point I really wanted to mention here is that Amber demonstrates a really complete misunderstanding of health throughout this video, which is visible in several of the statements she makes throughout, but it's also what we'll address next. So let's take a deep dive into that. Amber Lynn throughout her seven to eight years on YouTube displays a complete misunderstanding of health and weight slash calorie intake. I will now be comparing Dwayne The Rock Johnson to Amberlynn Reed. Not to be mean or cruel, but to use as an example of how severe her eating habits really are. So to start off, Amber, in the past, has done videos showing us how many calories she eats when she has a cheat day, binge day, or as she calls it, an off day. Creator Mukbang Calorie Counter reported one of her calorie intakes as 4,035 calories. Disclaimer, I'd never heard of this channel up until I did research and prep work for this video, so I was a little skeptical about whether there could be an unfair bias or not. But in doing my own research, I found out that Amberlynn has actually stated that she's had days where she eats up to 6,000 calories in a day. I have eight a little bit more than 6,000 calories today. So this estimate could not have been too far off, possibly even lower to give her the benefit of the doubt. Regardless, back to our comparison. Amberlynn Reed had an intake of 4,035 calories versus The Rock, who has an intake of 4,131 calories per day. So with those numbers, we can infer that Amberlynn was only a few crackers or an apple or a banana away from reaching The Rock's calorie intake but as you guys might have already predicted their diets differ drastically. Dwayne The Rock Johnson has a diet that consists of healthy foods such as cod, eggs, steak, chicken, vegetables among other very nutritious foods whereas Amber Lynn's 4k calorie day consisted of subway, chips, cookies, ice cream, um, something that she called Mexican food but I as a Mexican person had no idea what I was looking at. It looked like strips of dry chicken with a bunch of melted cheese on top. That's besides the point though. The point I'm trying to make is that her day is very much 
more unhealthy than Dwayne The Rock Johnson's day, but I don't think that's news to anyone. Anyways, The Rock has an exercise regimen consisting of intense cardio workouts with only one day out of the week to rest. Amber, on the other hand, has fluctuated between mobility and immobility throughout her years on YouTube. At one point in her YouTube career, or just in her lifetime in general, she only had the stamina to walk one minute tops. Other times she has stated that she has had the stamina to walk for about three minutes at a time. As of recent, the most the audience has gotten out of Amber in terms of mobility is that she doesn't have enough stamina to make it to her mailbox. The example I'm giving with The Rock isn't meant to say I want Amber Lynn Reed to end up being a bodybuilder. It's meant to express that people who do extreme eating also carve out the time to do extreme exercise routines. We'll talk about this later, but we really want to emphasize the point that she should not be aligning herself or comparing herself to skinny people when it comes to mukbangs. She is not in a place in her life where she can do that. Other mukbangers have stated that excess eating led to several health problems, including lack of sex drive, persistent diarrhea, and were at higher risks for diabetes, among other health risks. These people mitigated their health risks with exercise as much as they could, but seeing as Amberlyn isn't mobile enough to put in any time at the gym or even in her own home, we can only imagine the detriments that this excess eating has had on her for the past several years. Thank you for that possum. And in the same video, Amber Lynn somehow manages to also demonstrate a complete lack of understanding of mukbangers and mukbangs and what goes into them. Um, as possum already went over, she really does not completely grasp what goes into their line of work and all the risks associated with it, which is something that mukbangers themselves have to be really informed about considering all the potential health risks. If you've done any research into interviews with actual mukbangers, they treat it like a full-time job. It's something that you have to balance a lot in order to make sure that your health stays intact as you're consuming these enormous amounts of food. And it's something that Amber simply does not put the work into or does not take seriously enough, as she shows when she trivializes the trend by saying, well, skinny people do it and it's somehow easy to lose weight while doing mukbangs. And the conversation ends there. So she really isn't giving it the full attention she should considering how frequently she does these. This is definitely not something that I'm making up. I am not a mukbanger myself, but it's something that's taken seriously by a lot of people, including the South Korean government, which first of all, we do have some watchers in South Korea. Shout out to you guys. We love you and thank you so much for watching. So if I get any part of this wrong, I deeply apologize, but this is what I've picked up from news sources that I've seen translated from their Korean originals. There have been a lot of calls for studies by the government and specifically by their division of health that ask for more focus on the effects of both the mukbanger themselves and the viewers. And this is to combat the rising rates of obesity in the country. And they want to be studying basically how does watching mukbangs affect one's audience and how does doing mukbangs constantly affect one's both health and psychological state. And Amber trivializing this whole trend down to just like something you can do when you want to without really having to worry about your health or having to monitor yourself throughout the process and afterwards as well really undermines the whole seriousness of the situation. Um, and also the effects of her audience because it's something that she never actually addressed in the video but is something that is very important to think about especially considering that a lot of these people who are watching Amber and who are actual genuine followers of Amber are on their own weight loss journeys or are in similar situations of being obese and trying to get better posting mukbangs out of nowhere with no regard to your audience while being very confrontational towards them in the process obviously isn't going to have great effects on your audience. Like, I don't know what she's hoping that her audience gets out of this by watching her content when it's like this, but it's honestly hard to sympathize with her when she's just putting her audience at risk and putting herself at risk, especially considering from the research they have done, the South Korean government has found that one of the main risk factors that mukbangs puts one at is obesity itself, especially severe obesity, which is something that Amber already has and has suffered drastic consequences for in her health. It just seems incredibly irresponsible to me for her to be doing mukbangs considering she already meets all of the health risks 
and doesn't seem to care about how her audience is facing it either. So aside from Shrimpgate itself, since we've beaten the crap out of it by now, we can talk about the events that happened afterwards because there's a lot that transpired after the actual video came out. And so let's get into that with another brief timeline. So Shrimpgate happened on April the 3rd and the apology followed a few hours later on that very same day. It was recorded on Snapchat and seemed very insincere as she kept commenting on how bad she looked without a Snapchat filter on. But we're gonna do this with no filter. I'm... <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I just want to like apologize to everyone that I have like upset. Ooh, no filter is not cute. <laughs> but, um, I just, I, I really do apologize. I as if that was the big issue here. <laughs> she turned off her like to dislike ratio and disabled comments, which only led to more anger from the audience that wanted to have a dialogue with her as to how this was unacceptable coming from a weight loss channel. Yeah, one of the main talking points she uses in the video, the apology video, is that the video was pre-recorded, like the shrimp video itself was pre-recorded, which I really don't understand why that's any kind of point at all. Amber, do you realize that everything on YouTube is pre-recorded? I don't know what kind of point she was trying to make with that, except later on, she does kind of try to twist it and say, well, I'm bringing that up because uh, a lot of the stuff in that video I recorded a few days ago and I no longer agree with it, which, Okay, if you don't agree with it anymore, but you haven't released it, then edit it out or don't release it at all. But why are you releasing content you disagree with and then are offended to find out your viewers disagree with it as well? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And that's the general vibe of her apology video and her explanation video. She doesn't really bring up anything of much substance and a lot of it is just really thin excuses like that. The next major event to happen in the timeline was Obese to Beast made a follow-up video responding to Amberlynn Reed and the comments she made in her Shrimpgate video. The gist of his response is that, again, the mukbangs make her content contradictory to her weight loss journey, so how can you expect your so-called supporters to support you on both wholeheartedly? It just doesn't make sense. And that people who care about you and about your content will give you criticism because it's in your best interest. I mean, Possum and I were talking about it and really, we don't want like an audience of people who are just willing to blindly agree with everything we say. We're looking for you guys to give us criticism if you're willing to do it in an open dialogue and in a fair way. And it's honestly really weird that you would be asking that of your audience for a bunch of people who will just go along with anything you want. And furthermore, Obese to Beast was explaining to her that she should be expecting to face criticism from her audience because of these actions if she keeps posting stuff like this, and that it would be really unreasonable to think otherwise, in fact. So back to recapping the aftermath. In my opinion, the real apology came on April 8th, where Amber apologized for her behavior and her actions but this time actually did something tangible and demonstrated to her audience that she is capable of pushing herself. She exercised on camera, talked about her weight, and seemed happier than usual. Her likes finally exceeded her dislikes, which is a very rare occurrence for her channel. The video seemed very genuine at the time, and I actually almost wish this were the last Amberlynn video I'd ever watched. Just to give myself the illusion that she'd kept up with this lifestyle and continued to push herself to getting better. After that, we began to see Amber straying away from weight loss and moving more towards videos of excessive spending. There soon came a stream of consistent uploads of shopping hauls. On May 15th, after weeks of posing as an actual weight loss journey, or semblance of one at least, she's back to posting videos that are mukbang-like. And these videos do very poorly in terms of likes, but did get lots of views. Five months after Shrimpgate, the people who held out hope that her apology and new attitude was sincere get whiplash from a new mukbang that got an even worse ratio than Shrimpgate, the infamous rotisserie chicken mukbang. Oh god. Several people began to lose hope with her, but then came a very unfortunate time in ALR's life where she was actually diagnosed with cancer. Thankfully, she beat it and she has recovered from it. This recovery then gave people a resurgence of hope in her, 
Now that she'd seen the terrifying reality of what can happen when you neglect your health, her viewers thought this would mean there'd be a new weight loss journey after she'd fully healed and there'd be just a general journey in her taking care of her health. But then on August 5th, 2020, she posted a video titled, Am I a Weight Loss Channel? Asking the age old question, is she a weight loss channel anymore? While watching, I almost didn't make it past five minutes because the first seven minutes were actually a candy taste test. So welcome to the weekly vlog. I did want to start it off with trying these candies, which was a huge punch in the face for viewers who had been excited to see some progress in Amberlynn's health. So besides the candy taste test, the video ends with Amberlynn rephrasing am I a weight loss channel as a rhetorical question and insinuates that we, the audience, need to figure it out with her. Is this a weight loss channel? <laughs> that's, that's a question that we need to figure out, y'all. She gave no concrete answer before delving right into her torrid haul and showing us her Harry Potter dress, which I don't think anyone cared about after that. Nope. There was a severe like to dislike ratio and obviously the dislikes were higher than the likes. Since then, she has occasionally spoken about weight loss and posted some dietary plans on her TikTok. But from what it looks like, we're back to the Amberlynn who doesn't want to speak about her weight on her channel. So that's a pretty big timeline of events, but a lot of patterns start to emerge when we look at it critically. One of the main patterns, of course, being mukbangs. So Amberlynn actually stopped making mukbangs and filming them for a few months. But even when she ate healthy foods, albeit in huge portions, she still seemed to make the thumbnails very mukbang-esque, which isn't the best choice seeing as she was still in the process of recovering subs. Another example of her finding a way around mukbangs was her eating in a lot of her videos. One example is when she was on Jenny Craig, one of the many infamous attempted diets of hers. She made all of her thumbnails look like mukbang thumbnails. Only one of the videos in the screenshot that we are showing right now is an actual mukbang. But if you took the titles away, I don't think anyone would really be able to decipher which one out of the bunch is the mukbang as they all look identical. I actually went through her channel and since Shrimpgate, there has been 38 self-titled mukbangs but nearly 70 videos that could be mistaken as mukbangs and that number does not include the videos where she is going out to eat. Our girl knows she gets hate for mukbangs but she is also aware that food videos rack in views and money. So this is her attempt at finding a loophole and Amberlynn, nobody's falling for it. And she also puts the onus of that on her channel audience again for some reason. Uh, there's another video of hers where she states, people always beg me for mukbangs, but then when I do them, people go ballistic. How hypocritical, how contradictory. But that is absolutely not the case, Amber. And it's because the people who are begging you for these mukbangs are not the same people who are going ballistic when you do it. And that is because there are two very different demographics that are fighting for control over being the dominant audience of your channel. One of which being the very vocal group of feeders who watch your channel and the other one being the actual group of supporters who are on their own weight loss journey or who just want to see Amber get better. So when you're listening to one voice, yeah, the other one might not agree, but it's ridiculous to attack your whole audience at once by saying that you guys are the problem, you guys are pulling me in two different directions, and how am I to decide? Because yeah, god forbid you make a decision between like prioritizing which side of your audience you want to listen to based on both what would be best for you and what you feel like would be best for the people who actually support you, but you know, maybe I'm stretching by saying that. Anyways, another really clear pattern that pops up is, again, confusing the point of her entire channel. Amber flip-flops a lot whether she is a food channel, a mukbang channel, a weight loss channel, a lifestyle channel, a personality channel, a hauls channel, blah 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 de blah. And yeah, she can be a few of these at once, but not when a lot of them are contradictory to one another. Like, even besides the mukbangs versus the weight loss content, there's also a problem that some see in like the hauls versus the personality content, where you want to see Amber become a better person and, you know, use her money for things that make sense, like getting a doctor or getting health insurance for one. But instead, she decides to spend her money on torrid hauls every week and thousands of dollars on an app and then has the audacity to ask her followers to donate money to her when she suddenly goes broke. So again, she just seems to put it on her audience, um, both the responsibility of keeping her afloat in the end 
and also the responsibility of figuring out what her channel is for when she straight up asks them, yeah, we're still figuring it out together whether this is a weight loss channel or not. It just seems incredibly insulting. And finally, one of the last patterns that comes up is her delusions regarding health and the fact that it is quote unquote not hard for her to lose weight even though she keeps gaining weight uh, as she's doing these mukbangs. So yeah, that statement that she said about how you can do mukbangs and it's really easy to lose weight afterwards aged like absolute milk. I don't know where Amber got this information, but it's something that comes up time and time again because you will see her in later videos try to do mukbangs with healthier foods, like, like cucumbers stuffed with cream cheese, and I'm not making that one up. That is a mukbang she did and tried to pass it off as one of the healthier options she had at the time interesting. It had bacon on it too, thank you for reminding me. It was it was covered in bacon, stuffed with cream cheese, and there was some sliver of a cucumber that she was putting in her mouth. It was- All it the was, food groups. Yep. <laughs> There's the food pyramid right there. <laughs> it really seems like Amber doesn't have a very strong sense of what her health looks like, especially since also in this time frame she's gone through many health scares, uh, including the brush with cancer that we mentioned, and nothing seems to wake her up. Like, nothing seems to make her think, maybe I should be taking my health more seriously, let alone that she should start reconsidering whether she should be doing mukbangs in the first place. That's another pattern that comes up that seemed to really stick out at people with Shrimpgate, but definitely has not gone away since, and is obviously very frustrating to her subscribers to witness. So patterns are part of the reason, essentially, that we're reflecting on this video in the first place since, again, sad Sadly, they are very relevant to this day as they haven't changed much. So let's get into that. Let's get into the lingering effects of Shrimpgate in the present year, 2021. One of the reasons Amber said she wanted to keep this video up was so that in the future she could look back on it and see the growth and maturity that she's had in the time since. And honestly, I mean, yeah, in a way it is good to look back at because the lack of growth uh, is actually pretty stunning to witness in a lot of ways. Amber still doesn't understand exactly what she wants in her audience or in her channel. Um, we've seen this as recently as a couple weeks ago when she put up another poll in her community tab asking the audience, what kinds of videos do you want to see from me? And the vast majority of people answered weight loss. They want to see weight loss content, they want to see a weigh-in, and also on her Instagram story, she said, when do you guys want to see a weigh-in next? And a lot of people answered in the next coming days. And Amber ignored all of that. Uh, she decided to just ignore all of it and tell people, you need to stop prying about my weight, even though that's literally an option she gave them, but okay. And yeah, if that sounds like it's frustrating me, it is, and we're gonna get into that in a minute. But the main problem here is Amber still defends the fact that her channel is about her personality and lifestyle more than weight loss, but that's just simply not true and not something she's ever reliably stuck to. Plus, the two aren't mutually exclusive and it's kind of ridiculous to say that they would be like as a morbidly obese person like an extremely obese person to say that your weight has nothing to do with your lifestyle is just wrong and i'm not saying that she has to make content about her weight because it has to do with her lifestyle but i am saying that her presenting them as a dichotomy where she can only have one or the other as a defense against why her audience needs to stop asking about it just doesn't stand up to reasoning and isn't something that she should expect people to take without criticism. And basically, when it boils down to it, the main point I want to make is that YouTube is a personal platform, and when you're using it for vlogs like Amber Lynn is, you're inviting your viewers into your life in a way that you normally wouldn't for nameless, faceless strangers that you don't know. And Amber is the one who opened up the door to talking about her weight, and it's a door that she refuses to fully close once and for all. Yes, this is a personal, sensitive, intimate subject, weight and weight loss, but in the context of her also highly personalized channel, it's really not. And you can't have it both ways, Amber. Either you cultivate an audience who are welcome to inquire about and encourage your weight loss journey and vote in polls saying that they want to see more of your weight loss and want to see weigh-ins on certain days, or you shut it down and tell them it is no longer any of their business and end the whole conversation at that. Both of those are completely in her rights, and I wouldn't 
be like judgmental if she were to do either. I just wish she would stick to one, as do most of her audience, and that is the reason why it's so frustrating to watch and has been since she started pulling this bullshit with Shrimpgate. And furthermore, if she were to do the latter, if she were to start just telling people, my weight is no longer any of your business and I won't be talking about it in the future, nor should I, like, ask your opinion on it anymore, then she shouldn't be surprised when a lot of her audience just up and leaves because your channel has stopped providing the content that they came there for. So that's the main argument I want to make, but I also want to address a counterpoint that Amber has brought up a lot, which is she tends to kind of lash out when this is brought up and say that the people who are constantly questioning her about her weight loss content are just nosy and are just like prying into her life. And I have a lot of problems with that as well. And here's what I'd like to say. Amber, these people aren't voicing most of them at least, you've acknowledged that many of them are on their own weight loss journeys. And in truth, many if not most of your viewers are absorbed by you because they recognize a piece of themselves within you, whether it be good or bad. Most, even if they are haters, hope for you to surprise them by turning your life around and getting better, us included. And that includes fixing yourself as a person. There are things at stake here for all your viewers as well, so boiling down the people who are looking to see your weight loss content you've promised them as nosy and prying is just so completely unfair and honestly pretty condescending and misrepresentative to your audience and it's something that you should reflect on as to who you really want to be as a creator, what kind of audience you want, and what kind of platform you're looking to give. Are you really looking for an audience that will agree with everything you say mindlessly or are you looking for an audience that will keep you on track, deliver criticism when it's due, and is therefore a defined reason that you yourself defined and now are trying to blur the lines of but keep flip-flopping on. What kind of platform are you looking for and what kind of creator are you looking to be? That is all that I wish Amber would confront within herself. And with that you guys, thank you guys for sticking around and please uh, comment what you thought about this. Uh, we do a lot of long-form content like this and we're always looking to have an open conversation with you guys so whether you agree or not please feel free to drop your thoughts in the comments below and just tell us what you thought about really any point of this video. Uh, if you agreed with any point of this video, or just maybe you liked the way it was put together, or you just liked the trailer at the beginning, drop a thumbs up please, and also subscribe if you want to see more long form content like this. Uh, you can also check out our channel for some of the shorter, sillier videos we did, like our bundles review. And so with that, thank you very much for listening. It means a lot. Thank you everyone, and have a nice day. We've been Frog and Possum. Bye! Bye.